Hi, this is my 118th video on financial math for actuarial exam 2. In the last video, number 117, we looked at problem 4.3.1 in Berberman, where we introduced the idea of a callable bond. And this problem, 4.3.2, we are pretty much doing the same thing except with a modification at the end. We are going to be finding the price from minimum yield and minimum yield from a given price for a callable bond, but this time it's not going to be redeemable at par. It's going to be redeemable at some amount other than the face value, other than the par value. You're definitely going to want to watch these, the preceding video first before watching this one. I'm going to go a lot faster in this one. I explain the concepts more in the last one, so watch that one first and come back to this one. So here's the problem statement. Again, this is the same uh, thing as problem 4.3.1, except with the modification that you can see in bold here. We've got a 10% bond with face amount of 100. It's callable on any coupon date from 15 and a half years after issue up to the maturity date, which is 20 years from the issue. So you have semi-annual coupons here, so you can redeem it anywhere between n equals 31, 15.5 times 2, and n equals 40, 20 times 2. But now it's not redeemable at par. It's redeemable at 110 on any such date, including the redemption at maturity. So even at the very end, if it's redeemed at n equals 40, the redemption value is going to be 110, different than the face amount. Once again, two things to do, A and B. Find the price of the bond uh, to yield a minimum nominal annual interest rate of 12%, 10%, and 8%, and find the minimum annual yield to maturity if the bond is purchased for different amounts, 80, 100, and 120. So same directions except with the redemption amount of being 110 instead of 100. And just like in the last video, I said before you use any equations, it's very important with callable bonds that you think carefully, okay? Um, that you think in terms of worst case scenarios really is the main lesson. And again, as I said in the last video, if the bond is purchased at a discount, and if the um, if it's callable, and if the redemption amount is the same no matter when it's redeemed, then you the worst case scenario for you, the investor, is to assume that the redemption amount is paid as late as possible when the bond is bought at a discount. Worst case scenario is that the uh, redemption amount. This says redemption. Redemption amount is as late as possible. And that's what you want to go ahead and assume in your calculations. Again, in the situation where the redemption amount is the same no matter when it's redeemed. And when the bond is purchased at a premium, again, to save some writing time here, I'll do the Quotes, worst case scenario is the redemption amount is as early as possible. And that's what you want to assume in your calculations. Okay? So once again, we can use the uh, premium discount formula. And again, in its most general form, how people usually write it initially is P, the price, is the redemption value, C plus, in parentheses, F times R is the coupon amount, minus C times J, where J is the effective semi-annual yield rate, times A and J. Um, and when F equals R, when F equals C, excuse me, oftentimes people go ahead and replace F by C and factor the C out of here. But that would only be replaced by just C and C times R if the redemption value is the same as the uh, the face value. If f equaled c, it's different here. Um, however, in the general case, we can think in terms of the idea of the modified coupon rate. If g, little g, is the common symbol used for the modified coupon, coupon rate, it is defined to be the rate such that c times g equals f times r gives you the amount of the coupons. So little g, in fact, is f times r over c. And if you go ahead and replace f times r with c times g, you can still factor the c out. And what you're left with is, in the parentheses, g minus j instead of r minus j. And so you can think about uh, the premium discount formula in terms of whether you have a, whether you're buying at a discount, p is less than c, 
and g minus j is negative, or at a premium, p is bigger than c and g minus j is positive. You can think in terms of this modified coupon rate. And for this particular problem, the modified coupon rate would be f times r, f is 100, r is half of 10%, 5%, so f times r is going to be 5, and c, the redemption amount, is 110. 5 divided by 110, which would be 1 22nd, is the modified coupon rate. And that is going to be 0 0.045 repeating. I'll go ahead and store that in register 0. Okay, so I've got that stored now. Now let's go ahead and now solve the problem based on this setup here. Okay, so we go back to thinking about the price of the bond. Uh, first of all, in the case where the nominal annual in yield rate is 12%, so the effective semi-annual yield rate is 6%, J is 0 0.06. In that situation, P will be, C is again 110, Uh, G is this 0 0.045 repeating, and again, um, I need to evaluate this at the largest possible value of n. Before doing so, let's go ahead and simplify this part. So I've got what's in register 0, recall 0, subtract 0 0.06. This is negative, so this is going to be a situation where you are definitely buying at a discount. Times 110 comes out fairly nice. This simplifies to 110 minus uh, 1.6 is what we have here. 1.6 times a n 0 0.06. And now I need to plug in the largest possible value of n. n equals 40. 20 years from issue here to figure out what the answer is for part one of part A. So I have 1.06. Reciprocal is V. Raise it to the 40th power. N is going to be 40 here. I'm plugging in N equals 40. The latest redemption date is the worst case scenario when you buy at a discount. So raise this to the 40th power. Subtract from one. Divide by 0 0.06, that's a n, multiply times 1.6, subtract that from 110, and you get an answer of p equals 85.93. Okay, so that is going to be the answer for uh, a1, part 1 of part a. Okay, and you are buying at a discount. What about when J is 0 0.05, half of 10%? In the preceding video, problem 4.3.1, we were redeeming at 100, the same as the face value, same as the par value, and it didn't matter when the bond was re redeemed. The price was going to be 100, no matter what. But now, we're not redeeming it at the par value. So is this going to be bought at a discount or at a premium. It depends on the relationship between J and G now. And just like in the first example, uh, G is still less than J, so this is still going to be bought at a discount. Now we're subtracting 0 0.05, and so we still end up evaluating this at the largest possible value of N, because we are still buying this at a discount. We've got the 0 0.045 repeating. Subtract 0 0.05. Multiply times 110. And this becomes then 110 minus 0 0.5 an 0 0.05. Plug in n equals 40. It's still being bought at a discount. So we'd have 1.05 reciprocal raised to the 40th power, subtract from 1, divide by 0.05, now times 0.5, 
subtract this from 110, and we get an answer for the price of 101.42, higher than the face value, but still lower than the redemption amount. This is still being bought at a discount. J equals 0 0.04. Now we have a yield rate that is smaller than the modified coupon rate. G minus J will be positive. This will be bought at a premium. And in that case, we will want to uh, evaluate the price at the earliest possible value of N, the lowest possible value, which would be N equals 31, 15.5 times 2. Subtracting 0 0.04 here. So recall 0 minus 0 0.04 times 110 gives you 0.6. We get 110 plus 0.6 times, oh, I forgot my AN, AN 0 0.04. It should be written here as well. Now I evaluate this at the lowest possible value of N, N equals 31. So we take 1.04. Reciprocal, raise it to the now the 31st power, subtract from 1, divide by 0 0.04, multiply times 0 0.6, and add 110. And the price now when we buy at a premium, this is bigger than the redemption amount, will be 120.55. Okay, and these answers are all correct. All right, so we finished part A. Now let's do part B. Now we are given the bond purchase amounts and we want to find the minimum annual yield to maturity. We still think in the same way. We still think about the uh, when the bond is bought at a discount, which will be one and two, because the redemption amount is 110, then you would evaluate at the latest possible redemption date. That's the worst case scenario for you, the investor, and for a premium at the earliest possible. We need the calculator functions. I think unlike the last video, I won't bother writing out equations. If you want to see me write out equations, you can watch the last video, 117. You can also draw number lines for this kind of thing. I'm just going to use my calculator <clears throat> and think here. Think with me. Maybe you want to write down an equation. We buy the price to be 80. Uh, we're buying at a discount, and again, that means latest possible date, N is 40. I will write that down, N is 40. So plug in 40 into N. Plug in negative 80 into PV. That's outgoing money. The coupons are still 5, just like they were before. 5 goes into PMT. In the the redemption amount is 110. 1110 goes into FB. Now compute CPT. I slash Y, interest per year, but it's really interest per half year in this case. Get 6.465%. That's the effective semi annual yield. We need to double that to get the effective or the um, nominal annual yield. 2J, which you might call I2, is about 12.93% in the first case. The price is 100. That's still a discount from the redemption value. So we still use N equal to 40. That should still be stored in N, but just in case, I will type it again. All right, now the price is 100. Outgoing money, make a negative sign. That goes into PV. That's the only thing that's different. The, re the coupons are still 5, goes into PMT. The redemption amount is still 110, goes into FV. Compute I slash Y and double it. 2J or I2 is the nominal annual yield. That's about 10.16%. And finally, one more. Now we're going to buy at a premium. P is 120. That's a premium. So now use N equal to 31. 31 goes in for N. 
Uh, 120 negative goes into PV, 5 goes into PMT just like before, and 110 still goes into FV. Compute I slash Y and double it. 2J or I2, the answer to the last question is about 8.05%. Okay, let me remark before I end this video that I didn't have to do this with the modified coupon rate. I could have done it with the original formula here using uh, F and R still, um, but certainly just to illustrate it, you can use the modified coupon rate and that does make it clear more quickly whether the bond is going to be bought at a discount or a premium. So I think it's worth using.